This is the third table that we're going to investigate. This one is, I named it a bivariate. table. Okay. Probably has other names in the literature. This is not included in your textbook that I recall. Okay. What you want to remember is the prefix by means two. Variant means variable. So a bivariate table is used to organize Okay. two variable data. Okay. For example, rather than asking what someone's gender is, which is male or female, you might ask them, what is your gender? And what is your favorite food? In this case, you may have, for example, a female who likes Chinese food. So what's happening is for each individual in your sample, you're getting two responses. Okay? This is fundamentally different than what we did in the prior examples. Okay? In all the other graphs we've drawn or done, You've had a single variable, color of M&Ms, okay, or die rolls. You had one variable to contend with. Now you have two. So how do we change our table? Because those previous table designs will not work. Okay. Now, you would have had your data collection. So we're going to pretend like we already have our data collection, and we're going to put this into a table. So the table has to have... It's a rectangular box, okay? Now, we're going to, because of my organization here, we're going to, we're not, it's not going to be very complicated, okay? We're going to put, like an Excel or something, you have to make yourself a table of values with rows and columns, okay? Take me a moment to try to make this neat. Okay. Now, let's say we have perhaps five. four or five different foods. Suppose you had a party and you had males and females come to a, a buffet party and at the party you had a variety of foods. And as each person was leaving, they said, you ask them, what did you like? They said, oh, I particularly I really like the Chinese food. Maybe a lady says, I like the Chinese food. And a guy said, I really like the Mexican food. And another guy says, well, I like the Chinese food then each person is going to say, you know their gender, and they're going to indicate what kind of food they liked. Okay? So in this case, we're going to put the foods down the left-hand side and the gender across the top. Okay? It's just the way I've organized my table. Okay? I should have drawn it a different way, but we'll make do. Okay? So we have gender across the top of the table. I'm going to put gender, female, and male. And we need a total. We're going to add some things up. Okay. I should have made this column wider, but we're going to say, okay, Chinese food is one kind, American food. Mexican food, Italian food, 
and let's say, say that's all. We put a total here, okay? Now in your sample, there were three females who said Chinese food was my favorite. There were two males who said Chinese was their favorite. Okay? So three females and two males, three and two gives a total of five people favor the Chinese food. Okay? One female American, six males American for a total of seven. Mexican, four and four for a total of eight, okay? And then um, we'll say here, we'll say two females liked Italian and three males liked Italian. So that gives a total of five, okay? You added the you added the food favorites across. Now you need to in, add the gender totals. So that would be four, eight, ten females, and that's eight, twelve, fifteen males for a total of twenty-five people. Okay. Over here, you need to put favorite food type. So this is your basic table. For right now, we're not going to put any percentages or totals anywhere else, okay? We have a total here and a total here. I'm going to use a red marker. This is your basic data. This is the data that came from your sample. As long as time works out, okay, we're going to work a, pro a couple problems at the very end of the semester, and we're going to return to this kind of table at the end of the semester, okay? The importance of this kind of table is it allows you to organize qualitative information. Gender and food type are both qualitative. The frequencies, these are your frequencies, they're numerical, they're always numerical, but we're looking at ways to organize qualitative information. So it's a very important kind of table. And there's a couple of graphs that we use to draw, that we draw from this table, okay? Uh, from this table, we're going to draw what your book calls a cluster bar graph. Okay. We're going to draw what's called a stacked bar graph. And then you could go back and use the graph I showed you a while ago. A compound line graph could be drawn with this information. Okay. So I'm going to take the time to show you how to create each of these separate graphs from this same information. Okay. Stop video.